What is happening, everyone? My name is Justin Woodward, co-founder of the Mix, the Media Indie Exchange, as well as an advisor on the Black Game Developer Fund and co-founder of Black Voices in Gaming. We want to welcome you to the Mix Presents Black Voices in Gaming, which is a showcase and now nonprofit organization that celebrates and accelerates Black developers and creatives in the game industry. We have two amazing guest hosts for the show this morning who will be on the ones and twos. My friend and co-founder of Burnout Brighter, Destiny Cleveland, and independent developer and founder of Waking Oni Games, Derek Fields. I wanted to start off by saying thank you for joining us, and we want to thank our partners Twitch, Valve, IGN, and GameSpot for teaming up with us on this broadcast. You guys are awesome, and it means a lot. With that said, let's turn it over to Destiny and Derek and start the show. Hey everybody, welcome to another Black Voices in Gaming oh, showcase. I'm so excited to be here. Jay, thank you so much for that introduction. Guys, my name is Destiny and you may know me from the Burnout Writer podcast where we talk about gaming, mental health, social justice, and all things nerdy. But before we jump into this showcase, I'm going to just throw my mic over to my incredible co-host and let him introduce himself. Hey everyone, and thank you for being patient with us. I'm pleased to be joining Destiny and you all for another excellent Black Voices in Gaming segment. My name is Derek Fields and I'm the founder and director of Waking Oni Games. There, we create titles that explore cultural intersections while bringing the family around the couch. For those of you who are students, you can find me teaching game design and 3D modeling at Northwestern University here in Chicago. Now, let's get this show started. Thanks, that was a really good introduction. Good job. <laughs> but guys, <laughs> Let me just tell you a little bit about The Mix if it's your first time coming here. Black Voices in Gaming was created in June of 2020 during the protest and demonstrations that united us worldwide. We have been working hard to transform Black Voices in Gaming from a broadcast showcase into a movement. We not only share developers games, but we've also become a nonprofit organization that helps to accelerate the growth of professional game developers. Our mission is to facilitate a space where game studio entrepreneurs can access funding, publishing, press, mentors, and all the things that they require the need to succeed. Absolutely. We'd also like to give a shout out to our partners for today's showcase, Raw Fury, who helped get the series started and assisting with funding for the series throughout the year, PlayStation, Indie Game Dev Boost, ID at Xbox, and Razer. Some of our broadcasting partners include Twitch Gaming, Steam, IGN, and GameSpot. Uh, as far as our Steam event page, don't forget to check out the mix on the Steam event page where you can learn more about Black Voices in Gaming titles, buy the available games, or add them to your wish list. Uh, wish lists always help game devs a ton. Awesome. Thank you for that, Derek. Now let's go ahead and jump into the show. We have our first amazing guest, Adam Kareem the great mind behind Protodroid Delta. Hello. Oh my goodness. I'm on the stream. Hello, people. <laughs> <laughs> great to have you here. Thanks, Destiny. I'm loving your energy. I'm loving your hair. Uh, you know why? Thank like, you. Delta is like purple, you know, like, and there's like a like, purple kind of aesthetic overall to to the game and like and just the promotion for it so you're, you're, we're in the vibe right that's now. why i did it that's that's why, that's I, did why I did it that's good yeah I, did it. I just <laughs> <laughs> well it's great to have that's you here do. um we kind of want to jump right into it because i sure. want to know more about you i'm sure our guests want to know more about you how you got yeah, started thanks. like what what got you inspired tell us all about it Oh man, um, I got I got I got started in games. So I've been making games for about five years now. Um, for full disclosure, I'm like an old man. I'm like 35. I got two kids, and I've got enough. Stop your games. mouth. I'm no, just saying, I'm just saying because like I don't <laughs> for like oh he's making games for five years. What is he like 24? Like nah, homie. <laughs> I pay a lot in taxes every year. <laughs> I'm an adult man. Um, but uh, but yeah, I got my start because um. At work one day, like a friend of mine had just mentioned that, like I saw him kind of designing what looked like a game, and I was like, "How are you doing that?" Um, and he was like, "Oh, it's this thing called game engines um, that you can just use." And I was like, "What?" <laughs> but, 
you mean you don't have to work at Square or like Ubisoft or EA to make video games? Mm -hmm. And so I kind of learned from that about like Unreal Engine and Unity. And, um, and I've always kind of desired to see like a really good like Sonic the Hedgehog game in like 3D. Like I felt like after the couple of Sonic Adventure games, um, the, the 3D transition wasn't all that smooth, you know what I'm saying, for like a long time. Mm -hmm. And so I was like, okay, with Unreal, you know, like it's it's got like a lot of tools that can take someone like me who doesn't necessarily know how to program like in C++ or any languages and can design using the Blueprint system. Um, and I kind of got my start doing that, just like making fan games for different like IP that I loved as a kid and kind of wished made that jump the 3D really well. So I made like a Sonic, um, a Sonic uh, fan game called Sonic Explorers, which plays actually pretty right. similar to like Sonic Frontiers based on like the reveal trailers. But that game, that's a fan game made like three or four years ago. And then from there it became, I made like a Mega Man X fan game, uh, which ultimately became Pearl Droid Delta, which I'm working on now. Um, a Mega Man Legends fan game. And then last, like an Ape Escape um, game called, called Tough Stuff. It's very silly. The idea oh, that's is that, cute. You know, <laughs> yeah, yeah they have these stuffed animals who become magically imbued and they become alive and they become aggressive and so they're like tough oh. stuffed animals <laughs> it's, it's i like that stuff. though <laughs> that's super cute <laughs> yeah, so that's what i did um and so yeah and so that, that's kind of what got my start that's how i got my start in making games um fan games um unreal engine blueprints um and just hoping you know just this desire or thought that i could make something that um I hadn't yet seen made and I was hoping that the developers could have made it at some point. Yeah. No, I think that's incredible. And like the fact that you saw someone doing it and you were like, I'm just gonna jump on here and make games myself. Like I've oh. always found that overwhelming, but like props to you, because you you've I'm, made like several games and they I all I love all of the, the inspiration. You're no I well that. I mean like I we all gotta I be mean, a little bit a little yeah, bit wrong. <laughs> Like normal people don't do this. Like normal people don't be like, oh, it's two a.m. Time to keep making this project. It's like normal people are on Netflix at two a.m. Normal people are sleeping at two a.m. <laughs> uh, and so yeah, you got to be a little bit of a nut. Um, but it's a good nut, you know. It's like a macadamia Yo, nut. You know? I have to uh, macadamia oh. nut. I had to. I had to jump in real quick. I was about to yeah. introduce um, you. I'm sorry, Justin. Yeah, no, it. it's all good. Adam came in. Came in hot. Thank you guys for being so patient. It is amazing to have you. I know you have you have a, a, an announcement to make, and oh. I think you should make that announcement on air. Oh man, yeah. you're a good guy, Justin. So um, the long story short is, I recently signed a publishing deal with Humble Games. Protege Delta will be published by Humble Games. Uh, I had to keep quiet about that for a few days. It was really hard. <laughs> like, I was like, <laughs> avoiding Discord, avoiding like socials, so I didn't like slip up and pull a Tom Holland and like kind of spill the beans. Um, but yeah, yeah Tom I Holland. On <laughs> I worked on the game for like two, oh, two and a half years now, um, and just you know started with a Kickstarter, and then and then after um, Humble took really like really took the strong initiative to start the BGDF, the Black Game Developer Fund. Being one of the first recipients of that was like, you know, she's talking about to the moon. I was just like thrilled just with that. Um, but they continue to believe in the project. They continue to support me. And I can't understate like the support just like Justin's been giving me all along the way. Like it's it's a lot of things happen. It's like, you know, you, you know that phrase is like if I see far, it's because I stand on the shoulders of giants. Well, I definitely am standing on like Justin's giant shoulders, you know what I'm saying? Himself, <laughs> Tony Barnes, um, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Like uh, uh, like Sean, Alexander, like all the guys like on this like Discord we've got. Um, and they've been just a prop, like popping me up and, and supporting. And so it's like, it's just been like a lot of sort of like very fortuitous things, you know, meeting John Paulson, you know, he used to be with the organization. Now he supported and believed in it. And yeah, it was cool to see like what started as a fan project that I just really wanted to scratch a creative itch as his getting into following, gain some professional support. And now Humble Games is publishing it. Like, I, I don't know, it's like, it's kind of like a fairy tale, you know what I'm saying? It's like, I don't know. I feel like, I feel like it's very dark. I'm very happy this morning. I'm like, very happy. <laughs> you're you're um, always so happy, good. man. Yeah. You're always I happy. Know, so I'm always happy, but like, I'm like more happy today. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm <laughs> but like, now I'm like, As here. you should be. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome yeah, back, Derek. Well Welcome. Yeah, I'm back from the ether. I'm back from the ether to to, to say, uh, you know, let's let's get this. Let's kick this game up. You know, um, I, I would be really interested to demonstrate some of Protodroid Delta uh, on the on the stream if we're ready to to jump into some of that. 
Ooh, yeah, I'd love to see that. Awesome. Um, before we go, though, I want to talk a little bit about like the the Black Game Developer Fund, um, if we can, because I think it, it, it was very instrumental. You were instrumental in the Black Game Developer Fund, and I know that Desi was about to introduce me as you know one of the advisors on it. Um, yeah. But yeah, it's I mean that's been a crazy it's been a crazy journey, like just working with Humble to to start like the pipeline for that, you know. They have been very helpful and resourceful, you know, in the community, in the culture, like supporting de black developers in general and then black developers with this fund and then really allowing folks to uh, contribute to how everything would come together. And, and um, Adam was one of the first people that I reached out to, or you know, uh, for participation in this fund and he's been amazing to work with and has been collaborative communicative and congrats on you know getting your game published because you worked really really hard at it and you've been a you've been a like a pillar of light in the community oh man this is such that a really sweet what a warm show <laughs> man i appreciate you justin <laughs> Yeah, man, I appreciate you, man. Ah, oh, this is cool, man. Oh, man. You know, uh, you know what? Oh, man. I don't know. I don't know what to say. Destiny, I feel like we're friends. Derek, you were in the ether, so we haven't quite connected. But soon, you and I will have a bond, time, like yes. the bond of me and Justin, and it will be God. It's like, like two hands. Two hands. <laughs> me and, and my giant <laughs> shoulders. Don't anyway, giant that being shoulders. said, <laughs> yeah. Anyway, that being said, I'm gonna back out. I want you guys to really like jump in, talk about the game, and and play. I'll see you guys in a bit. Yeah. Bye. Thanks for stopping by, Justin. And thanks for bringing up Humble Bundle and like all of those amazing things. And that's incredible. Like, kudos to you. Like, Adam, that's amazing. So I know it's probably like a dream come true. But one of the questions I want to ask, and one of the things that piqued my interest the most, was the fact that you have a female protagonist. Oh yeah, that was really important for me. Um, yeah, for tell us about reasons. that. Um, so like, I one of the big motivations for Protodroid Delta is was like creating a game with characters <laughs> of people who don't normally see themselves in gaming, right? And so it's like I was like, as I was designing the characters and stuff, and, and, and trying to figure things out, um, like I realized like you know it's if you look at like like certain certain games that have rosters like over like seventy characters, something like that. And only like three or four are like people of color, for example, right? And it's like, that's kind of weird. Right. Like they're usually more animal mascots than there are like people who have brown or black skin, right? And it's like, that's kind of silly. And then if you look at like, and I decided we're making like a Mega Man inspired game. If you look at the vast history of like Mega Man games, it's like over 35 or 32 titles. Um, and throughout like on like, hundreds of characters and i think there's like three female characters you know it's like a very small subset and it's like this kind of sucks you know that like you have you have, like so many characters so many opportunities to show different types of perspectives there's like personalities and it's just like you just dropping the ball you know what i'm saying um so for me it was really important to create characters for folks who don't normally see themselves in gaming and to put them front and, and, and center you know like one of the key aspects of the game is that the, the cast skews predominantly females, like six to five or six to four, if I remember correctly. Um, where like, and like a lot of the key protagonists are, are female. So it's like Delta is female robot and then her creator is, is, is female, her best friend, Android. And I wanted to create a story where the central tension is usually um, not amongst a bunch of cliches, right? Where it's like oftentimes if you have female characters, the central story theme is around some male or like some love interest or some sort of right. like their, their value mm -hmm. kind of attached to how desirable they are to, to a guy. And I was like, no, it'd be cool if like, it's just a couple of women who are beefing with each other, you know what I'm saying? Or people who have different perspectives on how to solve <laughs> the problem um, and how they sort of like resolve that, you know? Um, and so, yeah, it was really important for me to, to create, again, this is that, that line, like create a game with characters for people who don't often see themselves in gaming. Um, and, uh, and like, and, and that goes like a lot of ways. Like, like for example, Dr. Shelton, she wears a headscarf because, like, you know, I'm Muslim. I grew up around like Muslim women my entire life, and like, um, and that's kind of how they look. You know, that's like my mom right there. That's my aunt. <laughs> um, uh, and you know, I grew up around like Latino folks, and you know, they're not often seen. We're not often seen as in like the lead roles in games. You look at like 
play Final Fantasies or often games coming from like overseas and stuff. And the most will be is like a side character or like maybe two side characters, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> um, and that's like been Barrett recently. from Final Fantasy. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, like Barrett. It's like Barrett it represents yeah. all of the people. <laughs> all, all the all black people, people. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's, why, that's why he's so buff. That's why he's so big. He's holding, he's holding all the that's black true. people. That's exactly. true. That's true. That's like all of them. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, I just wanted to get away from that, you know, and, and create an opportunity for for um for folks. So the cast has got like four or five black characters, got three Latino characters, um, it's got an Asian female character, a white a male character, um, and um, yeah, just like a good mix of stuff, you know. Um, and so yeah, that that was really important to me. Oh, Derek, so you I'm got to dash yeah, and then go. jump. Yep. There we go. Oh, go. he got it. Don't judge me. Oh, and oh, it's okay. It. Uh, it's, it's okay. It's okay. <laughs> We're gonna get oh, it on the next. I'm so glad yeah. that you brought that it's up. Like um, because I'm sorry. I I was listening to you play the game, and then I was like, "Don't backseat game destiny. Just let him do it. He can do it." But um, <laughs> what I was gonna say is, I'm so glad that you brought that up, and that you are so inclusive with diversity. So, really quick question, slightly personal, yeah. but I know you said you have kids. Do you have girls? I have a daughter and it's uh, really cool. Here's what happens. I have a I have a daughter and a son and I've been doing some like some like character designs working with like my artist Blaze Malefica on on, on Twitter. She's been doing like the comic work and my character illustrated Def Jews, um at Def Jews on, on Twitter and Art Station. Um, and we did some like different designs for Delta, different hairstyles. Um, and then my daughter walks up to the to the, to the, to the, to the monitor and she's like, Dada, me. And she's like, me, like that's that's me. And like, and that's what I'm trying to achieve with this is for people who don't see themselves, you know, front and center as like the main driver to see that and be like, that's me. Um, and I almost teared up because it's like, this is, this is, this is it. Like if, if the game doesn't, if the game just dies tomorrow, I'd like this is it. You know what I'm saying? I've achieved really something amazing that my daughter saw herself in a video game character, you know what I'm saying? Um, that I'm committing so much of my time to that millions of people hopefully will see at some point. And she just saw it and said, that's me. Um, so yeah, yeah, I got a daughter. <laughs> no, that's incredible. I love yeah, that it, because nice. growing up, I, I, um, I realized that my favorite characters were like characters that look kind of like me, but weren't really like me because right. we just didn't right. have that. We didn't have that, um, at all. So I was like, oh, right. my favorite character is Jasmine. And then like the next darkest princess that came out was Pocahontas. So that was my favorite right, character. Right. You know yeah, what right. I mean? Until we got to Tiana. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But no, um, another question I wanted to ask, and then I'm gonna throw it to Derek, is I love, you kind of talked about it, and I'm, I'm assuming that some of the um, cultures that inspired the look of the area comes from the people that you've grown up around and, and, and being Muslim, because you can definitely tell there's like a, a very special aesthetic to yeah. the environment. Oh, yeah, can yeah, you talk yeah. a little bit right. about that? Excellent. Yeah, so like, I stumbled upon this thing called Solar Punk, and that, and I just ran with that. So, like, as I'm designing the game, I'm thinking to myself, it's got to be unique, right? It can't just be generic sci-fi kind of future setting. Um, and so, I'm going on Pinterest, and I suddenly see like what looks literally um, a concept art that literally designed this stage. Um, it's a piece by Stephen Wong, an art station, um, and it's called like the Great Solar Bridge, right? Uh, or the Solar Punk Bridge, he called it. And then I found about like this comp art competition that um, Adam Hawk did called Solar Punk Art Challenge where it's like literally the opposite of like cyberpunk stuff. It's like a future in which like technology and, and people have grown together in harmony. And like, you see like this wonderful blend of like, like nature, natural elements and tech, um, all bolstered by like renewable energy and like a, like a hopeful, more pleasant kind of future. So that, that just resonated with me. And I was like, there's so many games where it's like, the setting is always like, it's a dystopia. The world sucks. Yeah. Everyone's in debt. You know what I'm saying? It's like, yeah. <laughs> all of humanity's dead except you and your cousin. You know, it's like, uh, man, that's sad. Like, is that the only vision of the future that we have? Like, there's no other like interpretation of the future might be. Um, and so that kind of drove things. On top of that, like, I've always kind of like, thought it was cool when characters were just like, it, it is like, like who can use like long flowing clo clothing as like a tapestry, like like a way of expression themselves. And I find very often in games, um, particularly unfortunately like female characters, they go the opposite direction. It's like you'll have a guy who's got like yeah. armor, like he's even his eyebrows are armored. And then you got a female character yep. who's like literally her her chest is out and stuff. And it's like, out, oh, just silly. out for everybody to see, it's like, fanfare. Are you gonna, you're gonna fight a war like that? Like you, you going to battle like that? <laughs> <laughs> 
I don't think you have your priorities in order. Unless, maybe she's like thinking next level, like, if I can get these dudes to think I'm so hot that they stumble in their tracks and they get distracted. It's like, <laughs> it's like what? What does it make any sense? So anyways, I don't think that battle um, tactic works in the field. I don't think it's like that. <laughs> <laughs> <No. laughs> so I wanted to design characters with that in mind. That like, you know, how can you design characters who like, where like their 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 clothing their, is like a form of their expression, like a part of who they are, and, and really pays a nod to sort of like old world kind of like like traditions and and and, and, um, and cultures and stuff. And so yeah, a lot of characters. That was a big point. Is like they all wear like long, flowing, colorful, vibrant, um, like like color clothing, which pays homage to different traditions and different cultures. Um, yeah, and it was just really that was really important to me too, like to make it look great. You know, what I'm saying um, in, in that respect. It does. It looks amazing. And honestly, like, it still looks feminine. Do you know what I mean? Like, she's still, yeah. like, even, she's not showing a lot, but she still looks very feminine and beautiful. And, and I just love what you did with it. I'm, I'm going to, like, throw up the fact that you threw in purple. <laughs> no, I'm oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Anyways. <laughs> you know what's funny? So, here, okay, here's how I settle on purple. Okay, here's how I settle on purple. And maybe you'll think less of me than this, but it's okay. Um, I wanted to make a Mega Man X fan <laughs> game, okay? Yes. And I wanted uh -huh. her to have the, the abilities of both X and Zero. X is blue, red is zero. Bl red, blue plus red makes purple. So she's got Color a theory, no, no. She's got a... <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> She's That's got fine. Cannon, I'm all about um, color theory. Yes. After X, and she's got a blade after zero, Funny. so she embodies both of their abilities, and so that's why she's um, that's how that's why she is the way she is. She's purple. I can't and I believe that I would think really less well, of you. Like everything else. Purple works really. That was a, that's it's, an incredible it's, reason. That's that's <laughs> that's what's up. But all right, Derek, I'm gonna throw it to you. I'm sure you have some questions. You know, I, I'm in here in the game, I, I'm like experiencing the gameplay firsthand. And so, yeah, the first thing is, I, I have to ask is, is the gameplay, you know, what what sort of, uh, we, we've talked about Mega Man, we've talked about, um, you know, all these other aesthetics that brought into uh, building the project. What other yeah. what other parts, you know, uh, what's, what else is that influence here that we might not know about? Yeah, I mean, honestly, like w when I launched the Kickstarter, people ask about it. Literally, the game is just Mega Man X in 3D. Like that is the DNA. Like I love that 2D side scrolling, how fast and how smooth the gameplay was, um, and how like the gameplay is so focused, right? It's so simple. It's like you just like I think Sequelitis did a really funny video. It's like they should call it Mega Man just jump and shoot, man. That's all you do. You jump and you shoot. You jump and shoot. <laughs> you do. So, <laughs> that's all you do. And so like that was one of the primary challenges. It's like. How do you take something in 2D space, which is very easy, jump and shoot, because you only move in two, like, two directions. But how do you do that in 3D, where you don't turn the game into like Fortnite, or into, into like a third person shooter, where now the, the core mechanic and the, the, the game for the player's expected to make is manipulating, like how well can you aim on top of movement? And that immediately becomes way less accessible. Like I know me personally, I'm not a first person shooter player, because like I could, I suck with the right stick. I, I didn't grow up playing with it. And so manipulating the right stick, I've never quite gotten the touch right. So I wanted to design, I was like, that was the main design challenge for the game. It's like, how do I make it that even in 3D, all you have to worry about is jumping and shooting. Um, and that's where like the lock on mechanic that you see is, 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 is presenting itself comes into play. Yeah. Where it's like, she will automatically lock on and orient herself and fire at the target that, um, so that all you have to worry about is jumping and shooting. Um, and, and that's been like a really important thing to like, toward translating the 3D Mega Man, uh, like Mega Man X in 2D to 3D. Um, so that on top of like responsive, like fluid movement, you know what I'm saying? If you notice when she jumps and stuff, she doesn't carry like momentum with her, like in a Mario game where it's like, it's hard to stop. If you jump and then let go of like the direction input, she'll just fall straight down. Because that was always right. really important with Mega Man is that like, it's one-to-one -one movement. It's like, you go where you want to go. Um, and when you do that, gameplay can become a lot more deliberate, a lot more, it feels more like um, rewarding. Cause it's like, she's doing exactly what I want to do. And if I messed up, that's cause mm -hmm. It wasn't because I was fighting physics, it's because I just didn't plan my my, 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 my my approach correctly, right? And so like taking from inspiration from games like Hollow Knight, Mega Man X, um, that really like really nailed that awesome feeling. Um, that that's like that's kind of what's going on under the hood and what's really important for the game. I, I can't champion that enough. Uh, when you said that awesome feeling, the game feels excellent when you pick up the controller and you um, yeah, you have to. You, you saw me falling, and that was only that was of my own my own fault. You know, nobody else. Yeah. I, I can't blame the game for those those mistakes. Um, yeah. But the, yeah, the, the um, you know the environments are challenging. The opponents are challenging, um, and the gameplay is super fun. Um, you know what you have going on here is already incredible. 
appreciate it, man. Yeah, a little tip. If you can make it just past this next section of like platforming challenges, oh, good shot. So he, if you can make it just past it, there's, there's a checkpoint, so you won't get reset to the beginning. Um, so there's an enemy here. There's gonna be a turret who's gonna fire at you from long range, and it's shielded, so watch out for that. And then you have like a little guard living up. I know, because I want you to get this checkpoint. I don't want you to have to reset. Gonna, he right, wants you to succeed. I'm gonna try. He wants <laughs> success for you. Ready? Ooh. Remember, he shoots three times. One, two, three. And then you can... Oh, oh you got this. Here we go. <laughs> I love that. I love, I love the variety of the enemies too. Like you, you, you get adapted to you, or you, sorry, you adapt to the the play of say uh, one enemy, and then another one shows up. Um, right. Oh, uh, we got this. Yes. Nice. Nice. <laughs> now, if, here, now here. you can die whenever, whatever. You'll you, you at least get a little checkpoint. Um, and so yeah, so that was the thing I really loved about Mega Man games is that like the the enemy design is not that complex. Like the enemies do like one or one or two things. It's very different from like modern shooter games where it's like you got enemies who like take cover and move them left to right and they have all this like advanced AI. I found that like if you just combine simple elements to, with each other, it can make for a very complex situation. So like here, it's just a yeah. moving platform that also happens to have some obstructions in the way, but also happens to have an enemy floating above you, which is gonna cause problems, right? Or like here, it's like, it's just two enemies, but they're but them being off stage a little bit and like opposite each other presents another type of challenge. And so it's really cool being able to like layer on complexity, but just like literally adding these very simple elements and combining them. That's one of like the main differentiators from Protodoid Delta from like the nearest analogy people have noticed is like, oh, it looks like kind of like Ratchet and Clank. Um, but the difference there is that like with Ratchet and Clank games, typically you're expected to do combat in like combat arenas and platforming and platforming sections. They're like, they're like divorced from each other. And that's not Mega Man, right? Mega Man is always like, you gotta jump and shoot at the same time. You gotta deal with like, like platforms coming at you and enemies coming at you simultaneously. And so that's been a really important design aspect for the game. It's been like to be able to, whenever you see some platforming, add an enemy in there. You know what I'm saying? So that like the player is like doing both simultaneously and that gives the game its unique DNA. Yeah, I can't, I was just about to say, I can't wait to see an enemy in this space. I'm already stressed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's a chaser. He's a chaser, that little one. Yeah, those little guys, man, they, they come for you. Like, got yeah, no they patience don't, as soon as they They're kind of relentless. Oh, there he is. And if you, there's you're a camera. You're doing such a good job though. You're doing pretty good, man. Yeah. Oh, this is my first time playing. <laughs> <laughs> Sweet. I'm, I'm, my health bar, I'm like, oh, come on. <laughs> you got this. You got this. So that's the thing, too, is that, like, I also have to kind of, like, toe the line between, like, clap, like, traditional Mega Man difficulty and, like, modern game design sensibilities. Because I felt like that's one of the reasons why Mega Man has not been as, like, it's like an icon, it's like a household name. But, like, I think the fact that the games have been so difficult that, like, not many people have beaten a Mega Man game. Um, kind of detracts from his overall appeal. And so I'm trying to find how do I kind of like bridge these two things where it's like, you have just enough difficulty where it feels like it honors that sort of like a appeal of it. Like, oh, these games are tough, but it's not so hard that like no one, no one can beat it. Only a, only a handful of people are very experienced like winning. Um, Cause I feel like, yeah. you know, games like Pokemon, that's part of the part of the appeal, I think universally is that like everybody beats Pokemon. Like no one doesn't right. beat Pokemon. And so since everyone has such fond memories of like, you know, I succeeded in that. It was it had some difficulty to it, but like I figured out the tight matchups and milk built my lineup. It creates like a like like fond memories, you know, and that in and that trick contributes to its overall like appeal, I think. Um, so yeah. I wanted to do that with Proto Joy Delta, that like it's a t it can be tough at times, but there is there are sensible game design decisions that allow for it to be a little bit easier so that like it can so more people can enjoy what Mega Man truly is, you know, and um and, and it, but in a 3D space. Um so like, yeah, like, so the checkpoints are in there. Um, there's gonna be like an item shop where you can purchase like little health, like um, health refills, you know what I'm saying, to help you out your low on health and a little item which will um, nullify damage when you fall into a pit so that like, you know, maybe, you know, if you're finding that too difficult, you can just, you can absorb, you can like nullify that and then just keep trying over and over again. Similar to how like in Celeste, it's like there's like no penalty to dying, you just start over it and you can keep, keep trying until you get it. Um, so like, yeah, just a lot in terms of like making the games ac accessible um, and modernizing, like, right. and, and, not, and not repeating some of the same kind of like um, things that kind of held back uh, previous, like, similar titles. Excellent. Yeah. I'm it's, all into this gameplay. I, I can't say that enough. I love this little touch here. But, <laughs> so, you know, earlier in the game, I, I spent this time navigating these. Um, these rotating objects and this right. last one here rotates faster than the others 
which yeah, exactly. uh, you know <laughs> proved itself to be an unexpected surprise. So uh, <laughs> yeah, it's just this those little nuanced nuanced adjustments that I think are really okay. cool. So turn around. So I the feel like you have to. to yeah, you oil. have to go through yeah. there again. Yes. Yeah. So you look uh, okay, dash jump again. to clear yeah. it. Yep. Yep. All right. But it's only there for a little bit, right? So you okay. Pull, yeah. So you got to do the dash. Woo! Oh. Yeah. There we go. Yo, this makes there me. <laughs> Good job, Derek. Good. I probably wouldn't have made it that far. Mad, mad proud of you. I can't <laughs> wait to play this game. I'm serious. Yeah. I cannot wait to play it. It yeah, definitely so brings much. back like nostalgic feelings of when I used to play <laughs> video games with my brother and stuff. <laughs> That is the, yeah, that's that's the goal right there. Um, yeah, the, the target release date is uh, Q1 2023. Um, and with the when with the humble publishing deal, like that's, it's been such a huge boom because now I, I haven't mentioned this before, but like I don't work full time in games. Like I work full time as like a like an engineer, like for for like mechanical engineer for a company. Um, and this is all like like a side project, sort of like just a hobby, like a creative passion of mine. Um, but with the humble support, I'm now able to like hire like set teams like level designers and environment artists and programmers to sort of round this game out. So it's like everything you see here, I designed and programmed like myself um, and, and built. The, the art I was able to, with the VGDF funds, hire artists, install like this art and, and put together this level. And my friend Armando Navarrete, who, who did the, the initial like level design for these couple stages. Um, but now with this like publishing support, like we can now finish the game out and add like, like all the rest of the levels, um, finish up with the bosses and sub bosses. The game's in a pretty good state though. Right now it is playable start to finish, including the bosses. Um, what's missing is like animations and um, some tweaks to the AI, beha the behavior of the AI. Yeah, this is a crazy section, by the way. Like, uh, it's a wild. <laughs> 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 when, the, when the lasers started intersecting, I was like, I'm just, oh, here we go. <laughs> 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 uh, you got a dash jump. Ah. Yeah, yeah, I forgot about the dash. Um, so yeah, so yeah, I'm really, like, so yeah, Q1 2023. Um, and um, yeah, now I've got the support that I need to sort of round this project out. Um, and yeah, I just couldn't be more thrilled. It's like a, been a tough road, um, but seeing the positive reaction from folks like yourself, Destiny and Derek, and and just like like the, the community in general has been like really like motivating. You know, people people like what they see. You know, they like what they see, and I, and I like that they like that. <laughs> I mean, like for this to be like a side project and a hobby, like it's very well polished. <laughs> <laughs> <Thank you. laughs> so. <laughs> When you were like, yeah, I don't do this full time. I just, you know, you know I just do this when I have some free time. I'm like. <laughs> it looks incredible. Oh, okay. Thank you so much. I don't. So here's the thing. There's a lot of stuff in the game that I don't know if Derek will be able to showcase. Um, because, uh, see, I want you to get to the end of this level because there's a cool cutscene where you meet, like, another character, I'll say. Um, but I'm not sure how much longer we have on the stream because, like, um, It'd be cool to kind of see that, but if we can't, it'd be nice to kind of showcase some of like what else is in the game. But um, so you guys let me know if if you think we've got the wherewithal. Oh, you're gonna have to like those guys. You gotta yeah. stun them and then get around them. So like the trick you know, is the way I knew that, and I was and I, I said to myself, we're gonna hit them, we're gonna we're gonna and then we're gonna move on and still still bump into them. <laughs> <laughs> so you gotta shoot him when he's low, and then you can dash up over him. Bam! There we go. Oh, now, there you go. I add, I add the complexity. Now you got to deal with two of these bad boys. There's one going horizontal while you're on a jump pad. So you gotta, gotta, okay, gotta, you gotta time when you shoot him, so you can make sure he's paused away from your primary path. Yep. And then you yep. sort of sneak right by. It's a, it's a wild, it's like simple elements. You just add them together to each other. And all of a sudden, you gotta, you got quite, you got a spicy pepperoni. They say, <laughs> well, spicy oh, meat ball. <laughs> 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 there we go. I think oh, up there. he's got a lot of help too, so you're gonna wanna uh, make sure the camera gets yeah, focused on that guy. There we go. Oh, gotcha. The power. I don't know if anyone's on a keyboard by you, but like a little pro tip: if you hit, oh man, what's the button? I don't want you to die. There's a button to regain your health, um, and I want to help you, what but you I don't, all, there's also a button to self. Yeah, there's cheat codes, man. There's also a button to like self destruct, and I keep forgetting which is which. <laughs> no. Oh. oh. <laughs> He said, I, I installed the game shark, but I don't know what it's going to do. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, you have to hold the left alt button on the, on the keyboard for, for one second, and your health will magically regenerate. It's OK. I'm going to press go. on with the challenge. He's 
He's gonna oh, press I'm on the challenge. Oh, I'm he's gonna, I'm gonna he's press, gonna press on. I okay. If if I die, I die. <laughs> See, there we go. That's the way. Yeah, that's the way. That's the way you gotta be, man. If I die, I die. See, he's good. I would have been like, "Ooh, I can regen my health." All, 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 all. <laughs> <laughs> a little tip with this one is if you dash jump onto the, the trampoline you'll keep the, you'll keep the momentum from it so you'll continue to like move faster in the air um oh, wow, that's cool. so to make that to make that second jump a little more easy um there's like little nods here or there about like for players who, who do become comfortable and gain mastery with some of the movement um that like like technically this whole section you can almost jump you almost dash jump to totally through if you all right, guys. Oh. I'm, I'm so sorry. <laughs> we just got told right. we're great. over time. But thank you so much for uh, showing us the game. It's incredible. I can't wait to play it. And I think we're going to throw up a trailer for the new game. Adam, it was great talking to you. It was really nice when you both, Destiny and Derek. Um, and I'm glad you like. I'm glad that you like my game. Thank you very much. <laughs> thank you so much. Love it. <laughs> Thanks for having me, folks. Take care. See you around. guest we have up is Scott Popular. Uh, you just saw the trailer for Ninja Man. Uh, and I, I, I think we, we we need to go right into talking to Scott and hear about uh, what's at play with Ninja Man. And so uh, Scott, are you with us? I'm, I'm, I'm here. I hear you. Can you hear me? Are we good? I can hear you. I yeah, hear we can hear you. you. How are you doing gang, today? Gang, gang. I'm doing fantastic. Fantastic. How are you guys doing? Uh, it's excellent. We're good. And, and we have, we're talking about games. Everything's excellent. Yeah, yeah, man. Congrats to Adam. Congrats to Adam. You know, black <laughs> excellence at all times. Shout out uh -huh. to Adam. But you, you, yeah. we, we, we want to give you your spotlight. We want to give you your spotlight, too. Shout oh. out to Adam, but also shout out to you, Scott. Not only not only do you have a game to share with us, uh, but, but please tell us about your, your background. Uh, tell us where you are calling in from. Uh, you know, please don't, don't miss any details. Yeah. Uh, so we're going to do that. All right. So Scott <laughs> Popular is currently calling you guys from sunny California. The weather is perfect. It's, I mean, sorry, sunny Hawaii. I'm, we left there a long time ago. And, oh, um, nice. Yeah. I'm, yeah. It's like I got, a, I got an extra tan on top of my regular tan, and I'm feeling pretty good. <laughs> That's what's up. You know, very melanated. Nice and chocolatey. And, it's super chocolatey at this point super dark special yeah. dark chocolate <laughs> and um but yes i'm talking about ninja man the game make sure you get the apparel at some point um probably in some retail store near you and it's a lovely game about infinite love like just imagine if you had a ninja best friend who could just throw love infinitely at the opposition or people because i feel like there's been a lot of sadness in the world lately um even on tv just being in america for this short amount of time and seeing like just travesty upon travesty upon travesty and i just feel like the world needs a little bit more love and ninjas disperse love the best so in ninja man all you have to do is hit them with some love take them to the club or take them back to their respective places later on in the game um, the music is very important to me. This is the first time I've ever made music for anything. And um, I love it. We tried to make something club banger-ish for all the people mm. in Atlanta and all the people in Tokyo. So uh, the game is basically in the setting of Atlanta, Tokyo. So I spent about 60% of my life in Atlanta and 40% of my life in Tokyo. So there's going to be a lot of different mixes. All right. And I'm, I'm watching you play this game. So you can use the left, you can use the D-pad to climb the trees. Okay. It'll make things a lot easier for you. And also if you hold down, yeah, if you hold down the square button, if you're on a PlayStation controller, you will run. Excellent. And you can also throw, you can throw love while you're in the tree. 
we got the Game Pro magazine, the tips and tricks. That's okay. gonna be a new saying. <laughs> Throw some love on you in the tree. The music is incredible. Yeah. When you're, uh, you, I'm you. sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. I just wanted to say when the trailer came <laughs> on, I was like, what? So, big up that's, on that. That's the feeling. Yeah, that's the feeling that we wanna we want people to have. Cause like honestly. When, I, when we started making this club, after the joke part of it, it was more like, yo, I want to make a video game that people can play in the club. And it just it just yeah. feels like it's more. <laughs> like, you know, you, you, like you ran out of money. It's like, oh, I can't buy no more drinks. Let me go play some Ninja Man real quick. And okay. it's, it's, been an awesome, yeah, it's been an awesome experience to see people, like, play the game and enjoy it. But even more so is when the people behind them like they're like coaching them they're like they're not they're not pro gamers at any point at all they're like yo you need to go do this oh watch watch out watch out oh no Derek, don't do this to me don't do oh you didn't die you just lame oh i'm, oh, I'm lame you lame <laughs> it's good so okay so I, i'm gonna be i'm gonna be here not only asking questions but playing at the same time um so you'll right. have to you'll have to bear with me if i if i uh if i'm distracted you know i'm throwing love at everybody um Okay. Tell us, Look tell us about the, the story of of Ninja Man, uh, because the the aesthetic, the style, everything is so. I, I gotta know more. I gotta know more. I gotta know why are we? Why are we? we there, there's zombie, exotic dancers, but we're bringing them to the to Glitter City. What's what's the world of Ninja Man? Glitter City. First and foremost, Glitter City. No relationship. No relation to Magic City at the moment. But um, <laughs> <laughs> with that with that being said. Um, it's just about you know shooting love and making people a little bit more happier than they were before. Um, I wanted this game to be extremely comedic and just taking a lot of experience from me growing up in Atlanta. And I spent a lot of times in like nightclubs, like doing various things, not only just like having fun and partying, I also did a lot of security work and I also had various video game events in various clubs in Atlanta and Tokyo. Mm. So I'm also one of the founding members of Final Round, which is one of the first esports tournaments in the Southeast. And so, you know, just growing up in growing up in the arcade era actually taught me a lot about like video games in general and just dealing with people. And yeah, there you definitely get the run on. And you know, I just I really, really, really enjoy ninjas and like the things that you know they're able to do and it's not like like some super fantasy thing in a sense it's like okay this is like basic you know like contemporary things that you could deal with i mean it's basically collecting fruit giving it to giving it to the people or later on they're going to be animals and dragons and all kinds of crazy things and just right. doing it to a really good feel good beat I cannot agree more. Oh, and the beat feels good. The vibes are good. Um, everything, <laughs> yes. everything is real fun. And there's a there's the a end. lot of like um, Easter eggs for people who who've lived in Atlanta, and people who lived in Tokyo as well. Like, I like doing a lot of collaborations with people who have like either clothing brands or or venues, who are like, hey man, can you put this in into your game? I'm like, yeah, if you're cool, we can we can work this out. No problem at all. Yeah. Oh, I love that. That's dope. I wanted to say, like, and when I first looked up the game, you're doing a good job. So I would, I don't know how many <laughs> chicks I would have gotten in the club already. Probably none. You know. But um, one of the things I wanted to ask you is, um, where did you start developing the game? Was it in Atlanta? Was it in the U.S.? Or did you actually start this process when you were in Japan? So actually, we started this process when uh, right before COVID hit in Japan. And it was actually a joke because the character itself, just the, the headpiece and the chain was the logo for a podcast we had called Ninjas in Tokyo. And Ninjas in Tokyo is actually... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> but Ninjas in Tokyo is actually a, a two-man rap group consisting of me and uh, Rekadam, who is, he's also the drummer in Steamed Universe. And he's worked on several indie games as well. And so That's we put we put that group together, and then you know we decided to. Oh man, that's where you need to use the gold chain R one. Let's, let's Derek, let's practice. Yeah, he yeah he did he definitely. We gonna practice, Derek. Practice using, 
Let's practice. No, just just the, the gold chain, okay? The R1. All right. There you go. Yep. When yep. You, when the white ninja gets close to you, hit him with the R1. There you go. <laughs> All right. So going back to to Roger, who is a fantastic drummer and a very good programmer and sound sound engineer as well. Uh, he helped me put all this together and then with a little bit more assistance from uh, Chu High Labs which is in Kyoto they helped us get get the game to this point right here so shouts out to Mark, Zach and, and Kenzie I've gotten a lot of support from the Japanese dev community yeah I wanted to ask about that like how how is it working in the industry there as an as I guess as a black entrepreneur, game developer. Um, I lived in South Korea for a little bit and I know it's it's much harder to get into, into things there. So how is it in Japan? Uh, food's great. And um, <laughs> yeah, the food's, food's great. But at the same time, it's like you're in a different market. So you have to, right. especially with a game like this, because like people were like, okay, so it's a ninja game. And he doesn't, this, the ninja's not killing anybody and there's no swords. So this is not your normal ninja game at all. But right. at the same time, I feel like it's been really well received. Uh, when we did the art shows, those were actually my, my favorite because like I got, like I was had the chance for, to see like Japanese people, especially Japanese women who have no, well, I wouldn't say they have no idea, but they, they don't, they're not really familiar with the whole club culture and they just look at the game and they're like oh this is so cute like the ninja is giving them fruits and he's taking them back to these places and that's it they're on the surface level and they just enjoy it i mean it it looks fun but like when yeah. i saw it i immediately laughed because i was like this is hilarious <laughs> like yeah. and then when i read the description i was like okay i see what we're doing here i love that you've combined two cultures and it it's seamless like even though you're like oh it was kind of a joke this it works really well and i think it speaks to your creativity like what you've done here even though you thought it was a joke at first like look what you've created so far this is incredible thank you thank you all right Derek, there's, there's nothing that was just that's the easter egg there's nothing up here but thank you for getting there I saw, I saw it on the side. I had to, I had to explore it. Yeah, Thank you. Yeah, to, yeah, to Thank check you. it out. Actually, actually, yeah. in the in the black disc where you are right now, that's uh, that's Roger. So I've I've made it a point to put in everybody who's helped me work on this game. They're in the game somewhere, like as uh -huh. an Easter egg. Excellent. So they know Excellent. exactly like like where they are in the game, and it's like it's been this game has been like really important to me because like. A couple of my friends died during this making this game and they're in the game now so it's kind of like oh i'm so you know, sorry no i mean you know it, it happens to everyone but i'm just glad that these people were a part of my life and they actually helped me make this game and it's so a special at the very least to commemorate yeah. them in that way yeah 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 so, Absolutely. so they're, they're definitely going to stay in <laughs> no, they're not being taken out And oh, there are black women in this game. Just to let you know. <laughs> I was I wasn't gonna was... ask. I mean, I was wondering, but I was like, I wasn't gonna ask though. <laughs> I wasn't gonna ask. I wasn't trying to put anybody on the spot. <laughs> I was yeah, you know, I wasn't trying to like throw you under the bus or anything. I was just like, I'm gonna wait. <laughs> uh, 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 that's, that's that's definitely like that was the first thing my sister said when she played this game. She was just like, there's no like you have to put more black women in the game. And I was like, okay, no problem. I got that. Yes, sir. <laughs> the, the cherries are Kudos very. Who to her? Good. That's 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 it. That's what's up, sis. <laughs> no, no. I mean, you have you have to say it. Like like, don't hold your tongue. If it's something that needs to be said, you do. just go ahead and say it. You do, especially because you are, you know, a black creator. So this is like our moment in time to see ourselves um, in spaces that we aren't normally asked to be in, which is why black voices right. in gaming is so incredibly important, right? So. I love that your sister said that. I wasn't gonna say anything until like after I was gonna hit you up on Discord and be like, "Yeah, yeah, like, yeah." Nice. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it played nice, hey, but um, <laughs> <laughs> the, the hair flip and the and the sucking of the teeth. Okay. Absolutely. Absolutely. Wanted to. If people wanted to find more about you and your game, can you plug your socials? Uh, definitely everything at at Scott popular so that's Twitter Facebook uh, 
Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. And if you want to follow Ninja Man directly, because Ninja Man is doing all kinds of things all over the world right now, you can follow that at, at Ninja Man Game on Instagram, and that has like all the pictures of removable graffiti. So one of the black women that's in the game is Quita, and Quita went to the beach yesterday, so you can see all her new pictures on Instagram right now. So just go there and oh, check okay. her out. Love a little bit of the the AR uh, AR gaming aspect, bringing some things into reality, fun stuff. Yeah, yeah, I really want to get into the AR thing because, like, wow, this would have been a lot easier than me just walking all the way over here and posting this up here. I could have did everything digitally. Absolutely. All right. Well, thank you so much for coming on and talking to us and showing yeah. us your game. It's absolutely incredible. You've done some great things. We're running a little behind, so we are going to jump off here. But uh, let's stay in touch, everybody, especially because okay. I want right. some swag. Yes. Oh, All I, right. got I got you. I got you. All, <laughs> <popular>. <laughs> All right. Guys, we just want to throw a shout out to our sponsors again who have helped us create this great showcase, bringing together so many cool people Raw Fury, PlayStation, Intel Game Developer Boost, ID at Xbox, and Razer. Again, thank you so much because without you, um, we wouldn't be able to put together what we put together. And it's been such an incredible journey already. But we're going to throw on our next trailer so you guys can check this game out. And then we're going to introduce our next guest. Hey guys! <laughs> Yeah, go ahead, go and do what you want. Live free, do what you want. Ride around town, ride a bike, son. Stay carefree, live life, son. Man, I know all the times they putting you down. I know it take a lot just to put up a smile, but for now, do things you ain't did in a while. Blue dress, ooh, girl, I'm feeling your style. We got the, we got to get it. We on that, we about to shut down the city. We make the, we find a force in our system. We love the, we down the pack of the vision. We don't got time to be. Yeah. Oh, that was Love dope. It. Yes. Like, <laughs> oh, the music was the great. With it. Yeah, yes. Excellent. All right. We want to bring Beloved to the screen to talk more about his game. What is up, Beloved? Hey, what's up, y'all? <laughs> How you guys doing? Good. How are you doing? Good. I'm so pretty good. good. I'm pretty After good. Listening to the it's beat. a pretty good day out here. So. Excellent, excellent. Where are you uh, at? I'm based in Portland, Oregon. Uh, kind of, it's a nice day, but you know, the weather's always kind of rainy out here, so we're big chilling. <laughs> I didn't mean to cut you off, Derek. Go ahead. Oh no, we're good. I was I'm only going to provide the the useful disclaimer that I'm going to try my best to ask questions and play games at the same time. So you know, don't judge me if I don't do well. I always judge. You've so. been you've been <laughs> killing it. <laughs> yeah. uh, You've been killing Ninja it. Man you're, good. you're good. I got, called, I got called lame three times in Ninja Man, so you know we're we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna dive in. But please, I'm, I'm so pleased. <laughs> I'm so pleased to to uh, to dive into Five Force Fighters. So um, we would love to hear more about about what we're uh, going to be showing here. Yeah, tell us okay, about first. Uh, tell us a little bit about yourself before you jump into the game. I want to know a little bit about you, and then we're gonna jump into more about the game. So. How'd you get started? Uh, What's the inspiration behind it? Okay, yeah, for sure. So I kind of got started when I was around 19 years old. Uh, a lot of stuff was happening at that time. I just like, it was kind of a dark time. I'm like, the best. Going to college full time, working full time. My parents weren't really around. They were all the way in Nigeria. So we were financially, you know, supporting ourselves. So I was paying for rent for my siblings. My sister was doing the same thing. <laughs> we were just really bad. I spent a lot of my time just thinking about like what I really enjoyed. Uh, and gaming was the thing. Like creating a game was really what we were all about. And my little brother, he was uh, I think around 14 at the time. We started talking. He was drawn in a, a, his uh, sketchbook. And I just saw and I got super inspired. And I was, I, I, I asked him right then and there, like, you want to make a game with me? And he like, always trusted me and we were, we ran with it. 
Um, we came up with a lot of concepts, characters, a lot of things changed. Uh, but we tried to keep it as simple as possible. Because at the time, we weren't really uh, specialized in art. That led to this five foot five. That's incredible. I love that you you and your brother work together. So that's one of the first things I think Justin actually told us about you um, is that you and your brother kind of like work together to make this game. I barely get along with mine, so I think it's incredible that you guys were able to pull together <laughs> and, and make this game. It's so, so, so nice. Um, and this is your first game, correct? Yeah, it, yeah, it's our first game. What's wild is I, I actually have like time to, I get along with all of them. Uh, you know, we got some cuts here and there, but yeah, we, when it came down to the video of doing the town of Badwood, we're really good at connecting and supporting each other and boosting what we like to do. I had a lot of support from my sister. My sister was the reason we were able to start animating. She gave us a tablet. She was going to the tablet. She was at the place. Her, her main computer of sorts that I took on the computer. Yeah, me and my little brother, he's done, he's done an amazing, amazing job. He's done an amazing job. He's done an amazing job. He's done an amazing job. He's done a lot of fun to work with. And trying to come up with unique ways to make the fight. That's really what's up. Like, I love that it's a family affair. Like, that's incredible. And that you have so much support. Because like you said, your parents are not here correct they're they're in nigeria yeah yeah so how do they feel about your game have you showed them what do what do what do <laughs> they think <laughs> uh, <laughs> well, uh, crazy thing was is that they were really drawn it at first you know uh, i think they thought it was kind of like uh i kind of made it you know, studying or something. <laughs> so we kind of were split up. So he likes in Arizona with my sisters. I'm still in Florida. But after a while, we I thought that we were pretty successful in our We were excited about what we were going to do. It looks so good. And I, I'm. I'm sure this goes without saying, like everybody watching is like, obviously this is where they get their inspiration from. But for those of you who don't, like myself, know for sure where you got your inspiration for, um, for the game, like, can you tell me what inspired you? I, I get like some Street Fighter in here, some some Dark Stalkers, you know, but like, Good have reference. you always been into fighting games and like combos and stuff like that? Okay, so if I'm gonna get serious about it, uh... Please get serious. I'm ready. <laughs> That's what we're here for. Okay, so so what happened was uh, we were trying to make <laughs> when we were first making the game. We were actually trying to make a platform fighter. Uh, it didn't really work out with the ideas that we were trying to combine. So we just started putting things together. There was no there was no direct inspiration from Boondocks. There was no direct inspiration from uh, Street Fighter. It all just kind of matched. You just subconsciously start thinking about what you're doing. Okay. I mean, I've played it kind of like that's what I said. It's like it all comes together at some point. Have your own idea, but those things are part of it. But the direct inspiration, I guess, would be this fighting game, actually, not even a physical fighting game, but hyper dragons by team. We can do it a lot. Yeah, that's that's where we got a lot of the interest. Even to, I guess that indirectly the uh, so. Well, it looks good. It looks really good. It I, is really challenging. Did you just <laughs> did you beat him up? With, oh. You won, right? You won. That was you, I'm, right? I'm, I'm I'm Pebbles. I'm on the left. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, most Pebbles. deaf. Most deaf. All right. <laughs> I Pebbles. wanted to be sure. Uh, the so game. You can't win the next thing. You can't lose the next one. You got it. I don't know. I'm getting bodied right now. <laughs> yeah, the fight is <laughs> tough. I can't lie. So a lot of the things about this game that we really tried doing that were different. 
there's a small bar at the bottom called the force meter uh, and burn the meter to do all types of all types of attacks so that was the main difference from most I usually conserve to the past philosophy but we try to take the convention I want to thank you for showing us your game. It's absolutely incredible. You and your brother have done an amazing job. If people want to find out more about you, more about the game, can you plug your socials? And, and why can't I talk today? Can you plug your socials <laughs> so we know where to find you? Yeah, um, we're at Kaizen Creed on Twitter, Instagram, Tumblr, I guess. I, I made one a while ago. YouTube, so you can find <laughs> us there. Oh, and in TikTok. So. Okay. Yeah, you can find us there on those social media accounts. All right. Well, thank you so much, beloved. Also, I I love I love your handle. Like, I love that it's beloved. That's so sweet. But thank you so much I mean, for coming on. And... <laughs> thank you so I mean, much for coming name, on. <laughs> I don't know what he was gonna say. <laughs> All right, we're gonna jump to our next guest beloved thank you so much for coming on and sharing all of that with us we appreciate you letting us play your game and we will talk to you soon yeah, thank you all right and our next guest is uh we have our next guest coming on in just a few minutes uh, or, or just a few moments but uh you, um while they're getting ready um des what do you think of this show so far what do you think of these games so far yeah, I'm excited to be here. I'm just really hyped to be a part of this because I I know you've been on our podcast before, Burnout Brighter, and honestly, I'm just all about diversity. So having this space, having people come on and, and creating a safe space where they can be heard and seen and you can see like the talent and the, and the creative knowledge that's coming into it is just incredible. But I won't go on. Let's bring on our next guest. Who is it again? We have Khalif Adams from none other than none other than Spawn on Me podcast. Khalif, hello. Khalif, what's up? How's everybody doing? I think I think I can hear you all. Yes, we can hear you. We can hear you. Actually, I can't. I can't hear you just yet. I'll just do a little dance until you get back. <laughs> can you hear us now? He can't hear us now. <laughs> I need some music. Maybe we, 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 we will float in the ether we can, until we will just float. I know appears. when he came onto our show, I promised him that I would have drinks, and and um, I do have drinks. I have drinks. Right. This this is just for Khalif, that old smoky like, mountain. Oh, like you're you're just talking about something you're not going to share with anybody else. Is is that what? I mean, like you know, like I'm not going to partake it? in it right now. You know, I'm just I'm just saying, like you know, when we all meet up, I'll bring I'll bring the drinks. Yeah. Ah, okay, got it. I mean, that's that's fair. That's fair. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, do you drink, Derek? Do I? Uh, you know, I I imbibe from from time to time. Uh, I I, I okay. try to keep it minimal, though. Um, you know, I, uh, when I, when I lose, uh, you know, when I lose control, I'd say control of my, my, uh, my spatial awareness. That's, I, I don't like being in that <laughs> state, so I don't stay in it very often. No, I understand. Uh, I understand. Yeah, I tried to articulate that the best way that I could. And it, it just, that's about how I <laughs> no, that was when good. I have too many drinks. Yeah. I, I understood what you were saying. I'm sure everybody else understood what you were saying, so it's fine. <laughs> but, um. I know we were talking a little bit about um, Black Voices in Gaming and, and why it's so important. Just while Khalif gets uh, settled in, guys, I'm sorry, you're just going to have to listen to us a little longer. But um, I think one of the most important things is that, like we said, creating a safe space and it's, it's like a family. So I know when I jumped in the Discord and I was like talking to the people and like and introducing myself so they didn't think I was slipping into their DMs like some random... <laughs> crazy chick um everybody's so friendly and that's really really nice because there's this idea that like black folks are not friendly do you know what i mean and i think like being in uh, a group of people who are like amazingly talented but also um you see the interaction between uh justin and our first guest you see how they're just excited um 
how there's a game that's about spreading love. Do you know what I mean? Being a ninja and spreading love. And I love that yeah, we're able chain. to showcase that here. And we're in a, a gold chain. Listen, the gold chain was the most important part. I don't know how I forgot that. But uh, <laughs> I think that's incredible. And um, I'm so happy that we get to be a part of it. You know? Absolutely. You know, if there's anything I could extract from that, what I heard was, uh, you know, knocking down stigmatisms and then building camaraderie connections between other people and I think that that really uh, that really hits the nail uh, the community within black voices and gaming has been one that not only serves me but I, I'm, I'm a part of it as well you know and, and being here with you today and, and everybody who's tuning in is uh, one of my favorite things about it uh, increasing the visibility of uh, black led games is really important this extends to um, uh, other diverse communities the BIPOC community LGBTQIA but today we are championing black voices and so, uh, absolutely, I, I can't say it enough uh, to, to check out the games that you've seen so far. We do have another one a little bit later, but uh, be sure to follow up on, on the titles that you've seen to wishlist them and support the developers. And if you out there are a, a burgeoning developer or seeking a path to get involved in games, absolutely connect with this community because there's a lot of people within here waiting to support you. That's what's that up. <laughs> that was really good. That was that was, that was nice. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yes. I'm not sure if people know this, but you were also one of the uh, interviewees on the show at one point in time, talking about something that you worked on, right? That's right. Uh, we are going to see a, a, a tiny piece of that a little later. Um, but yes, I had the pleasure of, of being a part of uh, Black Voices in Gaming. Uh, I think it was last year and I got a cool t-shirt that my that my stepson now wears to school to you know be like oh look at my <laughs> look at these games <laughs> uh, it's excellent um, you know but uh, yeah you know I, I at that time I shared um, some things from from Onsen Master uh, and and like I said we'll see a little bit more of that today all right awesome. all right I can hear you now Wait, welcome back what's good everybody right. how's everybody doing sorry for the hey, hey the the issues on on things but you know that's the way that, it, it happens that's you know that's we know it happens i don't know we've all been doing this so earlier, long I, I brought the drinks khalif i brought the drinks did you bring your drink i have i have uh <laughs> i have cherry water in here that better be so, cherry water son cherry water come on you know now. you get those syrups that you get when you go to the store and you get the when you make snow cones i got some of those yeah and i put some fizzy water in here and this helps me not oh drink okay soda. so i'm trying i'm trying to be That's fancy i had my pinky up when i did it it was beautiful oh okay was it, okay okay was there a memo <laughs> sent out about these drinks i'm going to keep this real brief because we have questions to ask you khalif <laughs> but did, did y'all have like a drink memo i i have coffee that's all i have I didn't know. Tracy came through with the drinks, and I was like, I, I got to find a glass. I have a glass right here somewhere. I know I got something. Uh, I didn't right. want to be left out. Um, but thank, thank you so much for having me. Thank you for, so much for pushing through the technical issues. Uh, Absolutely. Appreciate we appreciate no you being here. Khalif, is, uh, if, if, if we could jump right into it, if you could share with our audience who you are and, and what it is that you're doing with Spawn On Me podcast. Yeah, uh, my name is Kali Fadams. I run the Spawn On Me podcast. I like to call us the premier podcast spotlighting people of color in the video game industry. We've been doing this for almost a decade now. Uh, we just had our ninth year anniversary back in January of this year. Uh, and yeah, I think I think you come to our show to talk about all the things that you don't hear on other podcasts around blackness, around culture, around, you know, about what our con uh, contributions are to the space. Uh, and hopefully we do that in a, in a smart and, and fun way that, that makes you want to kind of dig into it and be a part of our Bacago uh, uh, residency here uh, at Spawn on Me. Now, now for the maybe the new listeners, can you break down what Bacago is? Because I, I don't know if you know, I've been listening to Spawn on Me for a long time. I know what that is. Maybe some people at home don't know what that is. Yeah, maybe some people yeah. don't know. Not. Me I mean, though. if y'all don't know, what's up with that? Y'all need to get up on, on uh, no, I'm just playing. But uh, when we first started the show, <laughs> Uh, it was it was basically where we uh, started it from. So I was in Brooklyn. Uh, my 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 co-founder, Cicero Holmes, was in Chicago. Uh, so we decided to mash those two up and, and make our faux land in which Spawn of Me resides, which is Chicago. So folks are like Bro broccoli. I don't know what y'all. Why are you promoting broccoli like this? <laughs> uh, I was like, no, it's Chicago and Brooklyn mixed together. It's, it's, it's Chicago, and people are like, oh, yeah, now yeah, I get yeah. it. 
you should be able to extract it, you know, once you hear it, but we're covering the bases just in case. Uh, how did Spawn on Me podcast get started? Yeah, so I was at home. Uh, I was at work, actually, uh, in my IT job, and I was hating my life because I was like, I'm tired of y'all not understanding how mice and keyboards work while I'm trying to teach y'all how the printer works. And you're, kill you're killing me. You're killing me, Smalls. Uh, so it was one of those moments where I sat there and I was like, I, I want to feel smart. I want to feel like I'm uh, you know, adding something to this to this uh, pastime that I love. Uh, so we started writing, uh, you know, way back in the day on, on a blog called the Spawn Point blog. Um, and then uh, decided to sunset that a couple of years afterwards and start a podcast. I was a big fan of folks like Giant Bomb and the One Up Show and all those things back in the day and said, you know, there's no space that has us in it. I don't see any black folks doing this work in, in that way and, and kind of showcasing and talking about what we bring to, to, to the gaming space, even though I know we're all playing. I know we are folks who are doing this work and, and, and being in those spaces. So got on, got on uh, uh, a game of 2K uh, was playing and, and ran to this cat while I was streaming it and he's like hey I saw that you write and I you know we've been thinking about wanting to do some video game content let's let's get together and, and do something and, and see what we can do um, and, and that's how Spawn and Me kind of came together it was me and C uh, coming together thinking about what the angles would be for that conversation and how we can bridge it out and yeah like nine years later it's still going strong and, and, and making things happen that's, uh, that's congratulations an on nine help. years Love yeah to together Thank you very much. Um, okay, so I mean, now we're we're nine years later. How do you how do you feel about it all? In, in, in contributing to a space that is that is bringing content to to Black voices and you being a part of that space as well. It's really humbling. I, I think you know it's one of those things where you know you start a side project and then your side project becomes a thing that is a passion project, and then that passion project then gives you kind of a feeling of like, oh wow, like this is a thing that I can do do well. And, and I'll be honest, it's given me a lot of purpose. It's given me a lot of ability to uh, kind of think, you know, future, future facing in, in a ways that I wasn't really doing when I was, when I was young. Um, and also it, it gives a space to be able to talk to, you know, our culture in a way that I think we don't really get a chance to see in this gaming space. Like, I think, I think culturally for, for the media space, we usually trend in kind of index really high on pop culture stuff. We are first movers on everything that's hot. We are the we are the culture. I say that all the time, and I mean it. Um, but it is one of those things of in the gaming space, you don't really hear about our contributions and what we do. Um, so me trying to be a conduit to to bring some of those folks to the forefront, while also you know talking about games through my prism as as a black man in in, in the world. Um, I think all of those things uh, you know add to this really cool space that we've created, and I hope then that people are digging it for one and people are seeing the conversations that we have as smart ones and really interesting ones and again i think it's just a thing of reconnecting that idea of nothing on this planet moves that's dope without us right gaming is the biggest space in the world right now in terms of entertainment we influence this space in ways that no one will give us credit for so how do we talk about that and how do we push that to the forefront and make that the understanding that we are we are making strides here and we are doing what we need to do to make it dope well said, uh, Khalif. I, I really yeah. appreciate you touching base on that. Um, you, I, I wish we could we could sit and talk about the podcast and sit with you for for much longer than our segment provides. You know, today. And so, you, of course, we have to we have to find an opportunity to bring you back and, and find an opportunity to talk about the Spawn Me podcast more. I don't know, maybe like a burnout writer, Spawn Me, like you know, yeah. thing. I'm, 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 He's I'm been gosh. on before, and he knows <laughs> he knows the invitation is always open. Anytime you want to come on, let's just just come. We got to get yes. you both on Spawn on Me too. I I, I know that the technical I, issues kind of kind of shortened it up, but uh, again, yeah. the, the, the the things that are that are happening today, I need everyone in the chat and everyone who's watching understand that this takes a lot of effort. This takes a lot of work to get together. This is a thing that is for the culture, and it really does help to to spread the word about our contributions to the space. So please support it. Please give it love, and please give these two wonderful folks all the love because they've been holding it down and hosting this thing and making it dope so i've been sitting in the chat watching so thank you again for having me it's been br been brilliant and uh, i'm sitting in the chat walk, rock, watching and rocking all the job wow those humble ah, words thanks what? for your support <laughs> yes appreciate it well, um, before you go you so much, before you go yeah where where can people find you Khalif? where can people find you Spawn on Me drops every Monday. New episodes uh, you can find on every podcast platform on the planet. 
uh, check out Spawn of Me uh, with Kali Fadams. I'm also hosting a show on NBCLX uh, called The People's Pregame. Uh, so you can check that out on Peacock TV and NBC. So you can go see that on your television screens. Uh, that's the last episode is going to be dropping on uh, this Saturday. So you check that out. Uh, it'll be uh, on 9.30 a.m. Uh, Pacific time. So go check that out and check out the, the rest of the show. Wow. Doing awesome. You guys go support Khalif. Absolutely. Wow, All right, wow. we that, are going that to. Drop at the end. <laughs> oh, that little... okay. So that was incredible having Khalif on. He's been on our show before, and he's just doing. He's doing. He's doing. He's doing the damn thing. He's doing amazing things out there, creating spaces, talking about things that people aren't talking about, especially like our influence in the the game industry, where you wouldn't even think about it. And the, the one thing that came to my mind was like uh, Grand Theft Auto. So much of our music, yeah. so much of our vibe is in that game. And people don't really, I don't think people really give us our props for it. You know what I mean? So I love right. that his show is focused on doing things like that. Absolutely. Absolutely. I, I, I can't I can't say enough that if you, if you haven't tapped in with Spawn Me podcast already, definitely give it a listen. You heard it from Khalif that there's, it's nine years running. So there's so many episodes, a backlog of episodes for you to, to check out and, and, and become familiar with. And, and then that, that drop with the, the, the Peacock TV uh, feature, like what? It, over here doing really amazing things. That was dope, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'm really proud of him. I'm proud of all of us, I'm not gonna lie. All right, right. let's go to the trailer. <laughs> I hope you guys saw that incredible trailer. That was beautiful. Just the gameplay was great. But let's go ahead and bring on our next guest, Jordan Scott, so he can tell us more about his game. Yes, yes, and I'll be on the ones and twos with the controller. Hello, Jordan. What's up? Oh, I can't you hear doing? you. Hold on. Oh, there you go. <gasps> I oh, see that Attack hello? on Titan poster in the background. <laughs> wow, but you don't see the Hunter x Hunter poster. I see how it is. <laughs> only his, only his like hand. I wasn't sure what that was. Oh, that's fair. How are you guys doing? The, doing well. You, the immediate Good. aggression that came you know, at this. At the I know. <laughs> I clutched I'm just my pearls. To give Did y'all see that? Anime, the respect it deserves. Okay. <laughs> yes. Yes. No. Listen, it's I five. love. Yeah, I love. I love anime. Have you ever heard of Escaflone? <laughs> Oops, no, so I'm the fake, actually. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but Jordan, it's so great to have you on. I'm so excited. Thank you. you. Yo, you. your vibe is so nice. Everybody's vibe has been nice, by the way. I know you guys are watching. I liked everybody's vibe. But <laughs> your vibe is so nice. I just okay, have to so throw that the out there. I want you to come in for me. <laughs> Don't get me beat up, Jordan. Don't get me beat up. But can you tell us a little bit? about yourself 
Sure, sure. So um, I'm Jordan. Uh, I'm working on an action game called Arbiter. Um, I've been making, I'm 27. I've been making games uh, since I was like 17, I'd say. Uh, mostly just fan games, uh, and then, so I guess I guess I made like I made a Dragon Ball fan game, I made a Pokemon fan game, <laughs> and then I made a fan okay. game based off of uh, an animated show called Ruby, and I actually got hired for that one. So I worked on that for a bit, oh. and then we finished, and then I left, and now I'm here. <laughs> I think I know Ruby. It was 3D animated, right? It was the girl with the yeah, red hair. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. See, I know stuff. Anyway. <laughs> I know more than I do. <laughs> <laughs> the game looks absolutely incredible. And I can see like some of the influence from from working on Ruby. Like the, mm -hmm. the character design and things like that. Um, and it, it's mm -hmm. it's beautiful. So one of my questions was how how did it feel going from making video games to to being hired on to do Ruby and now to be making this game? Uh, okay, so I, I will answer that. I will say something. <laughs> uh, Derek, it'll probably help if you press, uh, I think it's R3 to lock on. Um, I forgot to put that in the little oh. button prompt hey. thing. But there no, you go, I was, yeah. I was, okay. I was vibing, we're all good. <laughs> <laughs> okay, cool. Um, so how did I go from like, uh, just working on my own stuff to working in uh, like, a, like a professional environment? Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, so, it was, it was fun. I mean, it was, it was obviously jarring because you obviously you go from having like full creative control to like, okay, now you're with a team and you have people to answer to and you have deadlines and you have to do same right. things a certain way. Um, but it, it was it was good. It was, you know, it was effectively because um, I got I got hired like shortly after high school. So it, it was effectively my like school because I was working with a lot of like professional people who knew a hell of a lot more than I did. <laughs> so they, they, I kind of took that as an opportunity to, to learn as much as, you know, um, work. So yeah. It looks so good. Like I can tell that they taught you, Thank you. a lot. Not that you're not talented on your own because you absolutely <laughs> are, but this, this looks really good. I keep giving myself disclaimers. I don't know, you made me nervous after I didn't know what that anime poster was. But, uh, no, it's all good. <laughs> <this> <laughs> incredible like just the the flow of the environment so i i know i mentioned that i could see some like influences from ruby and we all know mm -hmm. we all know now that you are a huge fan of anime are there any other influences <laughs> for this game um <laughs> i would okay so as far as like games are concerned i would say the the, the two big ones are kingdom hearts and devil may cry um, because Kingdom Hearts is like my my kind of like bread and butter. It's basically like my my Bible for action games. It's what I grew up on, and it's what it was like my first exposure to them. Um, so just like the kind of like very accessible and, and 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 kind of like intuitive combat of Kingdom Hearts was something that I always really enjoyed. Um, oh shit! Did it break? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> it's okay. We'll reload if I. Okay. <laughs> as, you, as you can tell, I've given Derek a very early build. <laughs> um, no, yeah, we're lucky Hearts... to play. We're excited to play. Sorry about it. <laughs> Thank you. Um, Kingdom Hearts and uh, Devil May Cry. Devil May Cry just because it's it's crazy and, and you, there's just so much you can do with its combat system. Um, that was that was something uh, I very much wanted because Kingdom Hearts is fun, but it's also you know it, it, it has Disney characters. It, you, they're not going like a, as crazy hard as I would necessarily want them to. Uh, right. Yeah. right. Otherwise, um, uh, then there would be the anime inspirations, and those would be like Naruto, Hunter Hunter, uh, Dragon Ball, um, and I'd say that stuff like affected everything from like. Uh, um, character design to to like the the style of storytelling, I guess, because I'm very much like mm -hmm. a, a like I like I like uh, uh, storytelling in my games. <laughs> so um, yeah, uh, lot lots of inspiration from lots of different places. <laughs> well, I'm glad you mentioned the storytelling because I love like good narrative design. So I am mm -hmm. going to be interested in playing your game and like learning more about the characters and and the story. Mm -hmm. Without giving away too much, can you tell us a little bit about the story? <laughs> oh yeah, totally. Um, so <laughs> okay. this actually this this <laughs> this works pretty well for for the build because um, basically the story of Arbiter is that spirits have just 
spirits are basically like these demonic enemies that have just arisen from the world and put in humanity and kind of like kind of like attack on titan they put them in this kind of like corner of space um but two of them uh have decided to uh help the humans and you know, effectively give them their powers so that they have a chance to fight back so those two are actually the two that are following Derek around as he's playing um hmm. and the the uh goal i guess of the game is that uh your predecessor um, was basically defeated, and and the predecessor was, you know, um, a person called the Arbiter, who is the person who hunts down these spirits, um, and they were defeated, and so all the spirits they had they had sealed inside of themselves and defeated have been released back into the world, and now her hey. uh, successor, who's this character, um, is now hunting them down. And so what you're seeing actually is um, essentially every time you you defeat one of the bosses in the game, you get the ability to like, kind of like half transform into that boss. Uh, so if you see like Ooh. Derek switching characters, he's basically mm -hmm. uh, switching from the main character who's named Ash. That that that's Ash, yeah. And um, uh, he's 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 like using their souls to kind of basically change the entirety of the combat. So like you can see he's very focused on. Uh, sword play uh, in his in his like default state, um, but then if he right. switches to uh, one of the other transformations, um, he'll get like claws he can attack with. Uh, the other one, as you saw recently, is like, Ooh, look at that shadow focus. <laughs> uh, and and yeah, so um, the, the the main the main pull of the game is basically like yeah they they are uh, traveling around the world to uh, hunt down these 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 spirits. Uh, and, and kind of steal their powers. <laughs> yeah, that sounds dope. Like, I'm excited for this. Um, <laughs> so I know we don't have, like, any environment. <laughs> oh, yeah. I don't know what's wrong with that. <laughs> we have hey, nothing. I know. <laughs> Every time you start <laughs> laughing, nothing. it makes me laugh, okay? I'm no. I, I laugh when I'm nervous, <laughs> so that's just, like, how I process. <laughs> oh, that's so cute. Okay, but um, so one of the things I notice is, like, um, there's not any environment right now, right? I know there's going to be environment later. Does yeah. this take place in like um, the past, the future, or is it like, can you tell us a little bit about the world itself? Yeah, yeah. So I would say it's it's basically Western Naruto. <laughs> it's like there's not really any okay. technology whatsoever. Um, uh, characters are very community focused and, and very... Uh, well, yeah, just 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 not very technologically dependent. Um, so kind of like Middle Ages sort of deal. Um, but it has like, okay. as you can see with kind of the character's design, it has like Eastern influences as well. So um, right. lots of like, lots of like flowy coats and sashes and hair, uh, but they're still going to be fighting with like broadswords and, and armor and stuff like that as well. So, yeah. <sighs> Gotta love a good broadsword. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> for sure so you know, one, one i'm gonna throw it to, to derek yeah yeah one, sorry one, derek one benefit to, uh, <laughs> you're all good you're all good one benefit to, to the environment right now or the the prototype that we're seeing at this moment is allowing to mm -hmm. to focus in on on all the gameplay all the gameplay um, yeah i have my controller yeah. here and everything feels feels tight and frenetic and 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 you know the the action is is so cool to jump into mm -hmm. um what kind of work went okay. into some of the visual effects some of the timing anything that you could share there uh yeah um i mean a lot of work goes into it i guess uh like my uh i guess background is in animation so like animation is like kind of the thing i would say the the thing that i that i like focusing on um yeah so so for me it's just like um I, the money i received from the uh black uh, developer fund was directly to create the different transformations that you're playing as right now and what that entails is essentially like two months of just animating this character until he has about like 200 animations or so per um, transformation. And so from an animation perspective, that's kind of like what the workload looks like. Um, and then for, for effects and stuff, uh, as oh yeah, I, I totally forgot to mention, but the game has like a pretty central mechanic in its uh, light and dark form. So you actually have the ability to transform between your, your light and dark powers. Um, and in, in Derek's case, as he switches between them, he'll gain access to different uh, abilities, right? So um, 
for the uh, for the effects, I'm actually able to kind of reuse a lot of stuff, uh, like pretty consistently between the enemies and the character because they're all kind of pu pulling from the same power source, as, as it were. Mm -hmm. um, and so, and so, from that perspective, it's not that bad. I would say the biggest thing, <laughs> the big, the biggest amount of work would be animation, and then obviously environments because I haven't gotten to them yet. <laughs> I mean, but you'll get there. No worries. You'll yeah, get for there. sure. And after people for see sure. you on this, you probably like. Are you working on this by yourself, or do you have like a small team? Uh, I'm I'm pretty much working on it by myself. I will be hiring like an, an audio engineer, and I do work with uh, concept artists for for the characters and enemies. But otherwise, uh, yeah, pretty much all me. Yo, that's incredible. That's I, I, just I know that came out stuff. really slow. <laughs> you just discovered what? Sorry. Uh, I just discovered that you well, can like you. rapid fire switch between between dark and light modes which adds just a new layer oh, yeah. of gameplay um <laughs> gameplay tactician mm -hmm. yeah like i'm i'm a huge proponent of basically having all your tools available to you at all times um so for me like being able to just switch characters um obviously you can't do it right now but eventually i want to be able to like switch switch like transformations like mid combo very easily um yeah but uh being able to just switch characters switch uh between light and dark switch between abilities switch between ground and air all of that just just to give a very strong sense of of control when you're playing uh that's that stuff's very important to me man the animation and the effects are so beautiful like i'm captivated <laughs> even without an environment you know what i mean no this i'm serious yeah. It, it looks really, really good. It makes me very that. excited Thank for you. what's to come. Yeah. <laughs> no. You could have like Thank blobs you. in the background and be like, oh my God, it's so nice. <laughs> <laughs> That's really great. We we only we, we do just have a little bit of time left, but I, I wanted to mm -hmm. give you an opportunity to to share with those who are also looking forward to this game. Where can they stay tapped mm -hmm. in with it? Where can they find out more? Uh, so there is arbitergame.ca, which will give you a link to everything. Um, my Twitter handle is at Jordy underscore J underscore S. Um, and pretty much, yeah, Twitter and Twitter and Discord are like my places. So I will be giving tons of updates in there pretty regularly. So if you're interested, come check it out. I'm going to yeah, come. Absolutely. Are you are you going? <laughs> we're all going. We're all going. We're, yes. we're going to be there. <laughs> Thanks. Oh man! Well, wow. that, that was, was incredible. that was dope to see. Yeah, like he's basically just doing that by himself. But um, guys, uh, we have some more trailers to show you, um, and I know you're going to be really excited to see some of them. I know I'm excited to see some of these trailers because I always love seeing the stuff that is coming from Black creators in the game industry. How do you feel about it, Derek? I, I know there's there's a there's a special uh, trailer on there of um, a certain game that I'm, uh, yeah. I'm excited to see. <laughs> yeah, you know, I, I mentioned a little, a little bit earlier that there, uh, my studio might have something. Well, we do. Um, there's there's no there's. No <laughs> Uh, we, we do have a trailer in there, so there will be some latest footage from uh, Own Some Messer, which you can look forward to. But uh, to get to, to answering your question, trailers, I love trailers. Uh, you know, oftentimes, um, you know, my favorite part of any sort of uh, game event is getting an opportunity of seeing what's coming or, or new updates from that studio to just continue building that momentum for for uh, anything else to look forward to. So yeah, this is gonna be, I mean, I, I don't have any favorites here. All these segments have been great. This is gonna be one of my favorite segments. <laughs> <laughs> they have all been great. All the guests have been absolutely incredible. And I love that they took the time to come on and talk to us about their games. Like you guys are rocking it. And, and you're one of the reasons why Black Voices in Gaming is as great as it is, I know we think our sponsors, we think the people who help put us together, but also you coming on and, and showing your talent has been such an incredible inspiration uh, for people who want to get into the game space, for, for kids who might find us on YouTube, like seeing other people that look like you doing amazing things in the space that you want to be doing things in is so powerful, so very, very important. So big ups to you, congratulations on 
all the work that you've done so far. It's all been beautiful. And that goes for past guests and future guests. Like I'm excited to see what else we're going to be showing. And I'm excited to meet more incredible people. Like it brings a tear to my eye. I don't want to be like all emotional and stuff. So I'm not going to be, gonna, but it does make me really say, happy. Are you going to cry? Are you going to cry on stream? No, no, no. You know, I ain't gonna cry. I'm fine. I'm tough. What? It would, it, it would. It would be. It would. It would. It would. Uh, it, it would be dissimilar to me crying on on Burnout Brighter podcast. Burnout Brighter podcast. So yeah, if you go back and you look at the episode, I thought you that said featured in uh, Burnout did, Brighter head. <laughs> oh no! I, <laughs> I know. So that's that's a, not what that's you a completely, said. That's a completely different podcast. <laughs> Anyways, the point I'm sorry, being, guys. That was a blooper. The point being, <laughs> there'll be some there'll be some great clips from the from the blooper reel. No, I, I was saying, yeah. If you want, if you do go back and you check out that episode, yeah, I, I do uh, break down uh, after having answered an emotional, an emotionally uh, evocative question. Um, so there you go. I didn't ask that question, so I don't know what he's talking about. But um, uh <laughs> but. Honestly, with everything that's been going on, and, and we're going to touch base on it a little bit, like, um, let's just be real honest, um, the, the shooting in Buffalo, the, the continued um, racial profiling and, and, and issues that we're having, not just in America, but around the world, have made this a very tough time for, for everyone. So having Black voices in gaming come on is it's just such a bright spot. And there are people who don't understand it. Like I, I've seen some comments like, oh, like this just continues the divide, but it really doesn't. It's just showcasing us and it's us supporting us. And I think that's important. Um, we have to support each other. And that is what Black Voices in Gaming is about. Would you agree, Derek? Uh, hundred <laughs> percent. There isn't anything that you said that I, that, that, that it is to be argued, at least from this seat here. Um, it, it's, we are we are better when we're capable of, of building together and capable of showing the things that we're interested in building so uh, being allowed to join black voices in gaming and be able to talk with all of these uh developers and content creators uh shows that there is value for these games and podcasts and and any other content in between uh to be um that, that there's a community ready to receive it and there is i mean and I just want to point out, it's not just been like, oh, okay, guys, ready for the trailers. Let's get it rolling.
you were a waste of time. They turn a man to a beast right in front of me. The only warmth that I see steams from the sleeve so bloodly. He's naked. See a black man out in the pavement. Every crack in the ground is a burden. He's taking the place in bets. Spending their jets. Thin air bastards craving sweat. Salivating on a human marionette. Nervous fingers grip the cage they build and shake it. I want this man to help me break it. If not for me, for himself. But I doubt that the torture is aware of this health. I want wealth. Cause the goal of this age is to be the pan evil out there wrapped in the cage. I want help. If not for us, for our kin. And the little dead is in before they ever begin. I want wealth. Cause the goal of this age is to be the pan evil out there wrapped in the cage. If not for him, for myself. A whole river of heads. This is why I want wealth, so I can see our masters dead. Select your samurai. Right. Luna. Even in the darkness of night, the moon is always shining. Four. Elimination. Got any words for those trailers? Listen, like they were all so good, especially the one with the bathhouse. Like I really like that one a lot. <laughs> but all of them were really, really incredible. Like I love that we had a chance to show all of them, and I hope you guys are interested in uh, playing some of those games. And if you are, make sure you wishlist them. Absolutely, yeah. That was Onsen Master Grid Force, El Paso Elsewhere, BPM Boy, and Samurai Zero for you all to check out. Um, we are getting to the end of our show. And so as we come to the end of Black Voices in Gaming, we want to acknowledge those whose lives have been lost in the acts of violence towards the black community. Our hearts go out to the families and friends who's, of, those who, of those affected by the devastating Buffalo, New York shooting. Tragedies like these continue to darken and threaten our peace, but we will continue to push forward, fight, and create places for ourselves in this world. We have a right to be here, be seen, and heard. 
Black Voices in Gaming continues to create safe spaces and opportunities for those who wish to be in the industry. It's been the theme of the show. We've been talking about this throughout. That's right. Thank you so much, Derek. You're absolutely right. We've had some great guests today, but we couldn't end it without taking a moment to highlight why having this show during June was such a fantastic feat. June has always been summertime kickoff vibes for me, yet it's also a time of celebration in the African-American community. Juneteenth is a federal holiday celebrating the emancipation of enslaved people years after the Civil War on June 19th, 1886. Being here on today's showcase, highlighting some of the industry's most talented voices in gaming is an incredible accomplishment. We're all very proud to be a part of it. That being said, we would also like to thank our partners before we end. A shout out to those who helped make this event. Rock Yuri, PlayStation, ID at Xbox, Intel Game Dev Boost, Razer. We'd also like to say thank you to our team, Wilmer Sound, the Mix team, our broadcasting partners, Twitch Gaming, IGN, Steam, and GameSpot. Also, we'd like to thank you for joining us and for all of the devs for coming on and showing their special wares. We've also got merch available if you guys are interested. It's available at our roboroba.gg slash the mix. So go out there, support us. And Get the merch. Get the merch. Get the merch. And wish list <laughs> the games. Yes. Wish list. <laughs> Can't say that enough. Wish list helps game devs. And speaking of, the mix and event page on Steam to learn more about Black Voices and gaming titles, buy the available games or add them to your wish list. Again, they help the devs a ton. If you'd like to keep up with the Black Voices in Gaming family, you can follow Black Voices in Gaming at BVI Gaming on Twitter and check out at blackvoicesingaming.org. You can also follow The Mix on Instagram, on Twitch at Media Indie Exchange, and on Twitter at, at <laughs> Indie Exchange. Um, I, that, that's like the end of our show. That's all we have. That is, that, is, <laughs> um, that is pretty much the end of our show. But do you want to plug yeah. your socials again so people can follow you? Before I do that, I have to, I have to thank, thank you, Des, for the time that I've got to share with you today. Thank all the developers yeah. and, and content creators yeah. who have joined us. Uh, to thank the mix, to thank Justin and everybody who has helped pull this show together. I, you gotta get out that get get that out of the way first before I start talking you gotta about Gotta get myself. that out there. That's true. That's true. Yeah. My bad. Uh, I'm selfish. Yeah. <laughs> hey, it's it's okay to be a little selfish. Um you know, if if you want to keep up with me, if you want to keep up with Onsen Master, uh, you can find me at Derek B Fields on social media. You can follow up with the games at Waking Oni Games. Uh, and that's across the board. So uh yeah, keep tabs on me there. All right. Well, it's been an absolute pleasure sharing hosting duties with you, Derek. I cannot wait to work with you more in the future. If you'd like to know more about me, you can find me over at the Burnout Writer Podcast or on Twitter at DMVC32. Stay tuned for a quick message from Justin about our upcoming events and news, and we will see you all in the next showcase. Deuces. Bye. Thank you so much, Derek and Destiny. You guys are so amazing. We also want to thank you for coming through and checking out Black Voice and Gaming. You can check out the folks who are a part of the BVIG community at blackvoiceandgaming.org and on social media at BVI Gaming. We will have more events and showcases soon, as well as announcements for our BVIG nonprofit program and accelerator. Please support the devs by following them on their socials, wishlisting, pre ordering, and buying their games for show. Stay tuned later this week because we will be hitting you with the Gorilla Collective 3 on Saturday, June 11th at 8 a.m. PST, 11 a.m. EST. And we're dropping another bomb with the Gorilla Collective 3.5 on Monday, June 13th at 1 p.m. PST and 4 p.m. EST. Yes. Thanks for joining us. We will see you soon. Again, this is Justin Woodward. We're out.